Okay, so in this exam style question, the part A wants us to find the nth term of this sequence that goes minus 17, minus 12, minus 5, 4, and 15. So I'll find the first difference, the second difference, that one's going up 5, then it's going up 7, then it's going up 9, and then it's going up 11. So it's going up 2 each time. So I'm going to have my second difference, my first difference, and my first term. My second difference, 2a, is equal to 2, which means a is equal to 1. My second difference, which is my 3a plus b, is equal to 5, that's the blue part. That's going to be 3 times 1, which is 3, plus b equals 5, so b is equal to 2. And then my first term, my a plus b plus c, is equal to minus 17. So 1 plus 2 plus c equals minus 17. So 3 plus c equals minus 17, and subtracting the 3, c is equal to minus 20, meaning that the nth term is a n squared plus b n plus c. Okay, here comes the part that's a little bit different. It says, find the position of the term 100. So the position is n. It's saying, what is n equal to? So I want the sequence n squared plus 2n minus 20, I want to find out when it is equal to 100. So I'm just going to solve this like a normal quadratic. I am going to subtract the 100, so I subtract the 120 like this, and then I'm going to have to think about how this is going to factorise. So I need to try and think of two things that multiply to 120 that have a difference of 2. Uh, let's have a quick think. 120, let's just jot down some numbers of what it could be. 120, well, it's not going to be 2 and 60, or 3 and 40. Let's go to some bigger numbers. It could be uh, 15 times by, let's do 120 divided by 15, see how close we get. 15 and 8, no, not quite. Let's try 120 divided by 16, 14, 12. Ah, yeah, of course, 120 is 12 and 10. You're probably thinking, why is Mr. Bison taking so long? So it looks like it's going to be to do with 12 and 10. So that means we're going to have n plus 12 and n minus 10 equals 0. Yeah, that works, doesn't it? 12 times minus 10 is minus 120, and 12 minus 10 is 2. This is an n at the beginning in case it doesn't look like it. So this means that either n is equal to 10 or n is equal to minus 12. But does it make sense for the position of a sequence to be minus 12? No, it doesn't. So the position of the term 100 is the 10th position. That's where we've got this one here. I did not do very well at factorising that, but um, you could take a bit more time than I did trying to rush through and get the right answer for that. And now the last one that we've got here is to do with a quadratic sequence. Let's read and see what's happening. It says the nth term of a sequence is a n squared plus b n. The first term is 5. The third term is 27. Find the values of a and b. Now this looks like it's to do with quadratic sequences, but actually this is something else. This is going to start with the theme of quadratic sequences, but it goes into a different topic entirely. Let's just see if we can translate this into the problem it actually is. If it's the first term, we're saying that n is equal to 1. So when n equals 1, the formula would be a times 1 squared, a times 1 squared plus b times 1, it says that that is equal to 5, that's equal to the first term. So a times 1 squared is a, b times 1 is b, so a plus b equals 5. And when n is equal to the third term, n is equal to 3, we would get a times 3 squared for the position, plus b times 3 is equal to 27. So 9a plus 3b is equal to 27. Well, look what we've got here. We've got a plus b equals 5, and 9a plus 3b is equal to 27. All we want to do is find out the values of a and b, so we're actually going to be doing a simultaneous equation. We're not going to be doing anything to do with the nth term. We're going to solve these simultaneously. So I'm going to do an elimination method here. I'm going to take number 1, and I'm going to times it by 3. So if I take number 1 and times it by 3, 
I get 3a plus 3b equals 5, and I have 9a plus 3b equals 27. Tell you what, I'm going to write these the other way around so it looks a little bit easier when I do this subtracting part. So there's 2. Now what I'm going to do is subtract them. To get rid of the 3b's, this is an elimination method. 9a take away 3a is 6a. The 3b's cancel. The 27 take away 5 is 22. So a is going to be 22 divided by 6. Oh, I didn't times everything by 3, did I? So it's not going to be that. I didn't, foolishly, didn't multiply everything here by 3, so it shouldn't have been 5. It should have been 15. So 27 take away 15 is 12. Dividing by 6, a is equal to 2. I'm probably going to just use this one here. a plus b is equal to 5. a is 2. And so when I subtract the 2, b is equal to 3. So the values of a and b is that a equals 2 and b equals 3 that we've got here. So I deliberately put this question in because although it looks like it's to do with the nth term, we actually don't have to do anything to do with this stuff at all. It was just a sneaky simultaneous equations question. So I hope you know what I'm talking about when I was doing elimination. I didn't explain too much here because I'd presumed that you'd had a good go at that before. So that's everything on quadratic sequences. Like I said, I would definitely go with this first term, first difference and second difference formulae that we've got. I think this stuff is definitely, definitely going to be the thing that you should memorize, even if you just have it on a flashcard just before you go into the exam um, and then you make sure that you've got that in your memory. Okay. Found this video helpful then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel this is the end of the playlist but head to my channel's homepage to see what else i might be able to help you with and as always wishing you the very best for all your studies